Good, good morning. I'm back again in this room, and now I'll uh, moderate the uh, the rest of the session. I was uh, doing also some work at the uh, the other side of the uh, hall. I will talk about pelvic uh, con uh, congestive syndrome uh, evaluation and, and treatment. The clinical presentation is typically non-cyclic pelvic or abdominal pain lasting more than six months. It is typically positional. There may some may, may be some uh, problems of dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea, bladder ir irritability, and ovarian point tenderness. It has to be differentiated from left renal compression syndrome that typically has left flank pain, lower abdominal pain, and also intermittent hematuria. Differential diagnosis is a long list, but you should exclude at least pelvic inflammatory disease, endometriosis, adenomyosis, fibroids, or prolapse. But as you can see from the table on the right-hand side, there is a long list of diseases that, that need to be excluded. The anatomy that is relevant is the left ovarian vein that drains into the left renal vein, rarely directly into the inferior uh, caval vein. Then the right ovarian vein is a typically originating directly from the caval vein, but you need to be aware of a lots, lots of variants with duplications, draining uh, of, uh, of the veins into the mesenteric or paravertebral veins, etc. This is the most commonly seen anatomy. Here you can see the uh, right ovarian vein coming off directly from the uh, inferior cable vein, but it might also come off from the right renal vein, and here you can see all the variants from the left side. Therefore, it's very important to perform a good diagnostic workup, use duplex transabdominal, transvaginal, uh, or transperineal in order to demonstrate the reflux, then use CT or MR venography. MR venography has the advantage that you don't have any radiation exposure, especially in this young group of patients that are typ typically affected by the disease. And it uh, has a very high accuracy when you use time-resolved MR. Phlebography is still the gold standard. Use a tilting table or the Vasalva man maneuver. And also, in order to be sure that there is an insufficient uh, ovarian vein, perform a non-selective injection into the renal vein and not go directly into the ovarian vein itself. The aim of diagnostic imaging is to identify venous incompetence, to exclude other pathology, mainly Nutcracker and Mayturner syndrome, and also to depict the anatomy, especially on the right-hand side, because uh, this will save you a lot of time in looking uh, for the origin of the right ovarian vein. You should exclude upstream obstructive disease, Mayturner, but specifically a nut Nutcracker syndrome, and measure a pressure gradient. If the gradient is more than three millimeters of mu mercury, then uh, you can consider a Nutcracker syndrome uh, present. I use MR imaging for case planning. Here you can see, uh, indicated by the arrows, the course of the left ovarian vein that at a certain point uh, in the, uh, at the iliac level, uh, uh, gives a bifurcation, and here you can see the corresponding phlebography with uh, cannulation from the groin of the left ovarian vein, and you can see the bifurcation at the level of the iliac crest. There is a lot of variant anatomy, as I mentioned, and therefore the uh, pre-interventional imaging is very important, and here just some examples of uh, gonadal veins coming off uh, either directly from the inferior uh, caval vein or the renal vein. The diagnostic criteria, truncal ovarian diameter of more than 10 millimeters, uterine venous engorgement or the uh, ovarian plexus, filling of vulvar or thigh uh, varicosities, visualization of reflux over the entire length of the ovarian vein, retrograde filling of main stem internal iliac vein, and retrograde filling across the midline. Treatment options are many, medical therapy or surgical ligation, but I will focus on uh, transcatheter embolization. Patients should be selected. There is a broad spectrum of pelvic vein dilatation, but if you stratify according to diameter, uh, more than 10 millimeters, this will help identifying patients that will benefit uh, most likely from the procedure. I hardly ever use a juggler approach. It's provides you a good angle to approach the vein itself, but it's uh, very scary to the patient, 
And if you still want to come from above, you, I can recommend to use the basilic vein approach as an alternative. I typically uh, use the ephemeral approach, although it's a little bit more complex uh, technically with the use of four French devices. This is feasible and almost all the embolization material that we use is four French uh, compatible. I typically use a Cobra multipurpose and sidewinder catheter, use an 038 lumen for a coaxial technique with a micro catheter, and then coils, plugs, and glue should be at hand. And of course, also a gooseneck uh, snare in case of uh, problems with uh, losing coils or other devices. When you coil, uh, use uh, tight packing, start large, fill up the spaces, and sizing is very important and a little bit different from arterial sizing. Why is this? Because veins are not round, they are compressed flat or oval, and the typically way I do this is, you, is still uh, just use some high school mathematics uh, based on the use of uh, pre-interventional imaging, you can then uh, measure the veins adequately. Because this, uh, this is typically the aspect of the vein on MR or CT imaging, it's flat, so two times the diameter is actually the uh, circumference here, but when we put in coils or plugs, the vein will become round, and then you can go back to the uh, diameter by taking the circumference and uh, use the PD uh, equation. This is a case uh, of uh, imaging with CT prior to uh, the procedure. You can see the takeoff of the left ovarian vein here with a bifurcation. This is the corresponding phlebography. You can see the bifurcation here as well. And since uh, I prefer to use coils uh, because they uh, tend to give a, uh, less uh, in inflammatory problems afterwards, I coil the main trunk uh, just below the bifurcation, and then a second embolization is performed using a vascular plug uh, in this way with a good uh, phlebographic angiographic outcome. Second case, bilateral disease. You can see the uh, right and the left uh, ovarian vein, and the right ovarian vein was coming off from the uh, right renal vein. Here, the left side, you can see it's relatively easy with a cobra catheter to uh, cannulate and then advance distally, exchanging for an MP catheter. And here again, a bifurcation is seen. And you can see the coils in the first main branch and then the vascular plug, also four French compatible in the second branch. Then for the right-hand side, it's better to use a reverse uh, type catheter like the Simmons one, as you can see here. This is, this is the takeoff of the right ovarian vein, and then after cannulation with the guide wire, you can make an exchange again for the multipurpose catheter. And also here, preoperative imaging helped in identifying that there was a bifurcation actually here. So coiling is performed in a similar way with a, a plug in the small branch and coils in the large branch with an, a good outcome. Complications are few. They can be puncture-related, spasm or rupture, embolization of non-target vessels, stroke from paradoxical emboli, typically seen with glue, coil migration, and thrombophlebitis, and this is also uh, foam or glue-related. Pain or discomfort is rare and is usually uh, treated with uh, standard analgesia. Uh, there's hardly ever need for pain-controlled an uh, analgesia with an epidural uh, catheter. Technical success is high, almost 100%. Uh, there is still a recurrence rate, but I think if you use meticulous technique, that uh, number can be brought down. Failure and recurrence uh, are typically related to complex anatomy, and symptom relief is achieved in 60 to 100% of patients. This is a recent systematic review. Again, immediate results, technically, uh, technical success uh, up to 100%, overall improvement almost 90%, and in the long term, the overall improvement is slightly uh, over 85%. To conclude, in treatment of PCS, preoperative imaging is mandatory to exclude other etiology and identify the anatomy, reducing thus the radiation exposure to the patient. By using proper sizing and tight packing of coils, good long-term results can be obtained. Thank you very much.